So in this video I'm going to show you how to integrate by parts using the method or the, or the technique called the DI technique. The DI technique D stands for differentiate, D stands for differentiate, while I stands for integrate. So this technique is really useful to evaluate integrals like this here which we should obviously do using the technique of integration by parts. Now the DI technique is just one way of integrating by parts which is really short uh, as you will see in this video. So let's begin with this example here. Now this is how we use the DI method. Take note of the basics. I begin by drawing a table. Oops, so in my table. Uh, there we go. I have D on one column, <coughs> I have I on the other column, there we go. Then I look at these two functions that uh, I want to integrate. I see which function can be differentiated up to zero. Uh, so in that case, X is a better choice for D because I can actually differentiate X up to zero. So let's do that. I have x here. Just write that better. So we have x. If I differentiate x, I get 1. If I differentiate 1, I get 0. So that's what we want. And when we see a 0, we stop. Then let's put sine x in the other column, obviously. So if I integrate sine x, I get negative cosine x. If I integrate negative cosine x, I get negative sine x. Then we stop where we actually stopped for this. Then we put alternating positive and negative signs at the edge here. Take note, we begin with positive, then negative, and so on down the table. And the last step, or at least near the last step now, we multiply the adjacent columns so x times this also 1 times this and our final solution the integral of x sine x dx is going to be so i multiply positive x times negative cos x that's negative x cos x there we go negative 1 times negative sine x that's positive sine x plus obviously a constant of integration and so there comes our final solution for this integral so you can see that the di method is really fast in evaluating such integrals let's proceed with another example i'll take a similar example but this time i'll take x squared cosine x dx so i begin by drawing a table I put D on one column and I, so that's D, I on the other column. So which of the two functions can be differentiated up to zero? Uh, X squared is a better choice for that because I can differentiate that up to zero. So I write two, sorry, I write X squared here. If I differentiate X squared, I get 2X. If I differentiate 2x, I get 2. If I differentiate 2, I get 0. Then I stop there. The other function is cos x. If I integrate cos x, I get sine x. If I integrate sine x, I get negative cos x. If I integrate negative cos x, get negative sine x. Then we multiply the... Oh, oh we put signs here. Sorry about that. So... We we'll begin with positive, negative, positive, negative, and so on. Then we multiply the adjacent numbers here, the adjacent functions. So positive x squared times sine x. I'll just write this first. All right. So this is x squared times sine x. That's x squared sine x minus 2x uh, times negative cos x so that's positive 2x cos x and we've got 
2 times negative sine x, that's minus 2 sine x plus a constant of integration. So there we go. That's our final solution. Again, you can see it's really fast and easy. Uh, let's do just one more for this video. So for our third example, let's do x plus 3 into x minus 4 to the power 5 with respect to x. All right, so let's integrate the product of these two polynomials. Obviously, you can do this using any other method, uh, which is not by parts, but that would take you a lot of time to expand all these polynomials, especially this. So let's draw the table. We have d here, we have i here. Let's see which function can be differentiated up to 0. I guess that's going to be x plus 3. So we have x plus 3. If I differentiate that, I get, oops, I get a 1. Just take off this, so I get a 1. If I differentiate 1, I get a 0. Then I stop there. For the integration part, I'll have x minus 4 to the power 5. So this is really easy to integrate because this is just x minus 4 to the power 5. If I integrate it, I increase the power by 1. So I have 1 over 6. x minus 4 to the power 6. That's a 6. If I integrate that again, I have 1 over 42. x minus 4 to the power 7. Then put signs here. Plus, minus, plus. We we'll multiply the adjacent functions like this. So finally, the integral of x minus, that's x plus, sorry, x plus 3. Just write that well, x plus 3. The integral of x plus 3 into x minus 4 to the power 5 with respect to x. That's going to be x plus 3 times 1 over 6, x minus 4 to the power 6. So I have this x minus 4 to the power 6. All right, negative 1 times 1 over 42, uh, x minus 4 to the power 7. That's minus 1 over 42, x minus 4 to the power 7, plus a constant of integration. And uh, that's our solution for this example. So again, you can see how really fast this DI technique can be useful. Thanks for watching this video. I, I don't want to make this video long, so I'll end it here. In the next video, I'll proceed with even more interesting examples of how to use the DI method. So, see you in the next video.